free energy is not possible. It's actual in the realm of virtual reality. I have simulated a free energy device of my own design predicated on Eric Dollard's analog computer in LMD mode, also known as longitudinal magnetodielectric with the help of inspiration from Jim Murray, his research on oscillating power, and Clarence, his replication of Barbosa and Leal, Earth Captor, and all the other people who've inspired me, Nathan Stubblefield and John Bedini and Peter Lindemann and Aaron Murakami, all, um, all of them, Mark McKay especially, his analysis of the Evie Gray motor, what you do is you go over to, I've got a, some, some shortcut URLs, so you go to isgood, is dot gd forward slash uppercase b as in Barbosa, uppercase l as in Leal underscore, uppercase l as in longitudinal, uppercase m as in magneto, and uppercase Dialect, uh, D as in dielectric, underscore, small case or little v as in version, numeral 1, C as in Charlie. And that's a text file on my uh, Google Docs, but first you want to load into your browser a blank canvas, the simulator canvas. So, a different or, uh, shortcut URL. So, this one is is.gd forward slash blank canvas, no underscore, and I spell canvas with a double S. I misspelled it, sorry. Um, and then, once you get that loaded into your browser, you also download the text file at. Um, BL underscore LMD underscore V1C. Um, save it onto your computer and then open it up inside the simulator. And then work from there. Change it. Make changes. Basically what I've done is I've taken the concept of overunity or free energy and I figured out, quite to my amazement, that oscillating power goes to infinity. And then I realized that the normal physics, the politically correct physics that we're given in electrical engineering is under unity, devices that lose energy. So then I realized I had to have both in my system. So I devised a set of switches, three, one for power on and off, one for draining the power, and one for spiking the power. And you use them at your own discretion. And you look at the oscill oscilloscope readout, and it gets into ridiculous figures of wattage, volts, amps. I mean, it's truly ridiculous. But because I put in circuit drainage, I can cut the power and wait several hours and the circuit will drain itself. Um, but while it's draining, the load is being powered, the lamp. And it's, melt, it's suffering meltdown if it didn't already because it's too much power because I didn't pay attention to the figures when I was playing with the switches. But obviously all of this happens very quickly in, uh, in electrical time frame. So, you know, it's like um, nanoseconds or microseconds. So you need sensors that are sensing everything and very rapidly switching in and out to uh, very, of the three different switch modes to make sure that nothing, to make sure the circuit doesn't fry itself. Um, and also, to a lesser degree of importance, oddly enough, to make sure that the load doesn't lose its supply. Um, 
you know, the consumer, re when we receive our energy, we, we, it, we don't get a brownout or a blackout. So all of that situation of regulating power is something usually covered by normal elect electrical engineering. But in this case, it has to happen very rapidly to work at all. But it, I, I figure it's probably possible. I don't know. Jim Murray and Paul Babcock had difficulties, um, but they resolved them. So it must be possible. I just, you know, don't have the acumen to work on it, yet, uh, at least not yet. I, I'm sure I'll try um, in a very broad, generic sense. Maybe not something that would really work, be, you know, quick enough. Um, uh, because otherwise, this circuit will fry itself. And then you have to have the right gauge wire. It has to be big enough, and so it the ins and the insulation thick enough so it doesn't melt. And probably you know, a heating, a cooling system to cool it because it probably overheat. So there are all kinds of these practical considerations that are caveats. There's there's no question about it, because free energy is Prometheus fire, let out of the of uh, the. Um, Who's that guy? Pantheon? <clears throat> Pantheistic being left out of the box? Well, you know, out of control, and, and this is really what needs to be done is to control it, but, you know, that's all that's needed is to control it and be reasonable about it. But over unity, my God, it's so easy. I, 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 I blew my mind to see what I was doing the first time I actually succeeded in creating over unity in a simulated uh, electrical circuit, I had 150 billion gigawatts of power. Okay? 150 gig, excuse me, 150 billion gigawatts. I mean, I don't even want to count, try to think how many zeros uh, place value to the left of the decimal point that is. That's ridiculous. That's un unheard of. And when it gets up that high, it takes forever to come back down again. And unless you drain, allow for drainage in the circuit, it never comes down. It just stays there. And I had to delete the, the whole thing and, and redraw the thing from scratch because when you draw it in this simulator, it, it has recall. It remembers the state of the status of each component, how much charge it had, how much magnet, um, how much, you know, how much volts, how much amps, and you can e literally get readouts of every single piece of circuit, even the wire. You can, f you know, get an oscilloscope readout of whatever information you're, is possible to get from a piece of wire or whatever. So it's a really fascinating simulator, and I'm just beginning to learn how to use it. And this is a what I would consider a user-friendly, less technical and less dry, like Spice is is apparently a very popular one, but it's um, it's not as so showy. This one you get to see it, and it run you get to see it in real time as it's running, all the colored dots and colors and and the movement and. Um, and it's made by two fellows. Well, it was made by one fellow, Paul Falstad, in Java, and then Ian Sharp um, converted it to JavaScript. And that's cool because I don't have Java on my browser. Um, I guess I'm for security reasons. Yeah, I don't like all the security updates. I don't like any updates. If I have to update something, I just discard it. You know, these forced updates like Windows Update, you must. Update your windows. No, I don't. Because <laughs> it's, it's a pain in the butt. And anything that has to update frequently for security reasons is not worth having at all. Hmm. I should get rid of windows. Anyway. So, free energy is not possible. It's actual within the realm of simulators. It's a And how about Wikipedia? They actually admit in no uncertain terms, not using the word over unity or free energy, but using the word or term negative resistance or negative resistor. If you look up negative resistance on Wikipedia, there's a whole big, huge entry on that. 
and they give as an example gas discharge tubes such as neon tubes, uh, neon bulbs, fluorescent tubes and then they'll claim that the ballast on a fluorescent tube is required not just to start to initiate the illumination of that fluorescent bulb but to choke it because if you don't choke it it'll melt it'll suffer meltdown and and breakdown and it's very common knowledge on YouTube you can look up anything you, you know on um, fluorescent bulb blast and they'll, they'll have little video animated videos as uh, showing you that what the way they describe it they say that if you don't choke the fluorescent tube it'll short itself and then fry but that's not really what it is negative resistance is the reciprocal it's not the negative but it's the reciprocal of normal resistance in which you don't um, if you raise resistance normally you diminish amperage at a fixed voltage and since voltage times amperage gives you power the watts if you um, raise the resistance you lower your output of power but with a negative resistor it's the opposite when you raise your resistor your resistance goes up then your amperage goes up and that means you have more amperage to, to multiply against a fixed voltage which means you have more power where did it come from what's this rule of of uh, it's not a rule of thumb they say it's like uh, and they even make jokes, oh, the physics police are out to give you a ticket for speeding if, if you should uh, go faster than the speed of light or create an energy out of nothing. Uh, yeah, but what's this negative resistance? It's another reality, but they don't tell us this. That's free energy. So it shows between normal resistance, what they call positive resistance, and its reciprocal in other words, a reciprocal like the number 5, the reciprocal of the number 5 is 1 divided by 5, 1 fifth, 20 percent. So negative resistance is the reciprocal of normal positive resistance, and that means that normal positive resistance conforms to the physics rule of thumb, and it's not a law, of underunity, of underachievement, in which normally the energy that goes in is greater than the energy that comes out but in negative resistance it's the other way around more energy comes out than what goes in and you know we'll have to leave it to the physicists to scratch their heads over that one but no more of this business that um, free energy is not possible or over unity is not possible both under unity and over unity are possible and uh, over unity is possible by recognizing that what we take to be a standard is really the standard of under unity and to think that mother nature is imbalanced is ridiculous mother nature is always balanced she balances out everything she balances out over unity with under unity and everything have to, has to come out equal in the end in the overall although all things must grow somehow and I think what we do is we sacrifice energy in exchange for intelligence but I don't know where where does the growth come from if everything is overall at a fixed rate then this phenomenon of growth is a kind of over unity in its own way I mean what are we losing if anything if, if we grow and evolve I don't know we we lose our stupidity is 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 that something we'll, we would cherish or I mean cherish so much that we wouldn't want to lose it I don't know I don't know these are deep questions that have everything to do with physics because it's it's you know it's just true in one area as it is in another area of life so if we're told on the one hand that physics doesn't allow for over unity that's like saying don't grow, don't grow up, don't mature, just stay where you are, just maintain your, the status quo, which is impossible. Either things get better or things get worse. They don't stay the same, we know that. 
yet we're so busy trying to maintain things to be the same. I'm sorry. I keep I can talk endlessly. So this was supposed to be a short video. Well, then <laughs> I'll leave it at this. But it, it blew me away that overunity is possible, and then the, the problem is regulating its use so that you don't fry the, the circuitry. So it's um. Although different types of overunity devices have different levels of danger to them, um, they're not all the same. Some are quite dangerous in frying themselves, and some are not so dangerous. And I think it has to do with how much regulation is integrated or built into the circuit design to prevent, to give automatic regulation of a sort, automatic choking of a sort. And what I was reading today is some of that's based on segregation, separating the amperage component from the voltage, or more accurately speaking, separating the electric field from the magnetic field, and not just assuming that they always have to be um, operating in parallel with each other, or, or in concert, I should say as two companions or, or as two sides of the same coin, but instead just two companions who can part their ways and go their separate ways. And then and they meet up some, sometime later and they're not the same because they lived separate lives before they came back together again and got reunified. So there's a lot we don't know about electricity and a lot we don't allow ourselves to recognize because it's right there in Wikipedia. They're admitting over unity without using the word in no uncertain terms. They call it negative resistance. And they can't get away from it because it's common knowledge. And every time we have a neon bulb or a fluorescent bulb, electrical engineers have to deal with it. And they've got to call it something. So they call it negative resistance. And then the math that goes with it, when you look at the math, it's like, what? That's over unity. That's free energy. Hello? And you, tell, and you tell us, oh, that's a perpetual motion machine. No, it's called negative resistance. So you see, now we know what to call it. We should not call it free energy, even though it sounds good. We should call it negative resistance because that implies it's not free because we didn't claim it was free. And that implies we, we may have to pay for it somehow. We don't know how. <laughs> well, the intelligence of regulation, that's how. <laughs> I just went back to the Wikipedia article on negative resistance to reread it again. Further down in the article, they actually get clearly honest, but um, wrapped up in mathematics, and most people would skip past that. So what they do in the beginning, in plain English, they use a circular argument. They say that, oh, a drop in voltage will uh, increase the flow of amperage, but an increase of amperage will drop the voltage. And that's circular. They never say what initiates either one of those or both. They just say that one encourages the other, and before you know it, the whole thing melts down. So how to get started? Well, the little math equation hidden f further down in which um, there's a reciprocal relationship between negative resistance and positive resistance. So they're, they're very, being very clever between uh, a lawyeristic uh, mentality and um, and a statistician's outlook on you know hide the truth within the numbers, you know within the skewed um, charts, the data charts. <laughs> They're being very uh, well. I I I can't I can't even express it in words. It's uncanny, but it's obvious. They're not trying to be clear and upfront about the subject. Yet they have to talk about it because it's a reality of our modern era. The reality, though, is that we're too stupid to notice because they want to make sure that we don't. Sorry to say it, guys and gals. There's a there's a uh, conspiracy uh, afoot to keep us dumb. Hey, just ask any European or any uh, Asian or anybody outside the country, you know, basically. Uh, yeah, those Americans, they're so dumb. It's not our, well, I guess it is our fault. We live uh, cushy lives, and so we don't have the hunger to find out, the driving hunger 
something I got. I lost my son six years ago, and I've had nothing but a driving hunger to self-teach myself electrical theory for the practical use of coming up with an understanding of free energy devices. And I've managed to do so, but then I'm hungry, I'm motivated. I'm very motivated because I don't have anything else to live for. You know, I don't have to be frustrated necessarily or nar narcissistically um, um, resentful. Um, I might be grief-stricken once in a while, but I try to stay positive by keeping busy in s constructive activity for the betterment of the of everyone, which includes the people who did mischief to, toward me. So it's, um, it's amazing, though, what the mind can do. And I guess I missed my calling when I was younger, so I, I get to do it now. I get to make up for lost time. So I get to understand that over-unity and free energy is part and parcel to our life. We're just not allowed to be aware of it. So uh, when anybody says, oh, that's, uh, that's fraud, that's fakery, that's a perpetual motion machine, no, it's not. It's negative resistance, and it's best exemplified by fluorescent tubes. Not the lights, not the appliance, but the tube minus the blast is a free energy device. A neon bulb all by itself is a free energy device because it exhibits the characteristic of over-unity. And if you can figure out how to loop the output of that device, that bulb, back to the input, you'd have yourself a self-runner, a perpetual motion machine that will melt down and destroy itself without appropriate regulation. But we think about it. Once you turn on a fluorescent bulb, if, it, if it's performing negative resistance, Rather than choking it, you know, strangling it, why not just take the energy output and run a few other devices with it, you know, power your cell phone, recharge the batteries, and power the fluorescent bulb itself, you know? <laughs> and that's what I did when I first reached with su uh, achieved success. I realized that a spark gap is what I needed in my free energy mock-up. There was no way I could get away without it. And it's not for polarization and phase relation, as Clarence says, it's for free energy. I mean, it does do those things, but more important than that, it's for free energy. Without which, without a seed of free energy, there's nothing to magnify. There's no free energy to magnify. There's no seed of free energy to magnify. So that spark gap is what's inside a fluorescent tube or an inside a neon bulb because there's no filament going across it's just gas and the filaments is broken in the middle and it's just a little nubby filament on one end and a little nubby filament on the other and lots of gas in between and the electricity has to go across that gas and when it does so it exhibits the characteristic of negative resistance a free energy characteristic an over unity outcome so, gosh, we should be uh, putting fluorescent bulbs in our design, f or, or neon bulbs in our design for free energy devices, and just make it a matter of course. Take out the choking uh, ballast and put in a ballast of our own design that doesn't choke it, unless it has to, as a, only as a last resort, as a safety mechanism to prevent meltdown. But in operation, it should simply reroute the energy to other better uses instead of just throwing it away because that's what choking does you, you know you choke somebody to death you throw away a life and that's what we do when we choke a fluorescent tube with the um, um, <laughs> with the use of a ballast on that attached to that fluorescent tube so it's uncanny. We're not thinking this thing through, but of course, you know, we don't put our attention on it. We don't study it. So I've been studying it for six years, and this is the conclusion I get to. There's our free energy, electrical free energy device right there in front of our faces. Not just the dunking uh, toy bird dunks its nose in a bottle of water, in a jar of water, in a glass of water. 
Now we've actually got electrical free energy devices right in front of our face in the form of gas discharge tube. That's the generic term for neon bulbs and fluorescent tubes. It's a gas discharge tube. And there are probably other examples. I'll probably run across those, you know. I bet uh, certain types of transformers or resistors or who knows. I don't know. But a gas discharge tube is a negative resistor and it's uncanny. It's free energy sitting right in front of our face if we recognize it for what it is and thus utilize it for what it can do for us. Uncanny.